I was talking to the first nurse um, that was down in pre-op and I was like, oh my gosh, I was like a gown with color. I was like, I'm so excited. And then she left, do something. Mom was finally back with me at that point. And then she brought another nurse in to steal stuff from my room. And she grabbed like a bag and something and we were talking about the gowns and she was like, I think you guys are the first person that I've ever seen that you like the gowns. And I was like, but they're so sparkly and colorful and they match my nails and it just, I don't know, it did it for me. Okay, so it is the night before the GJ placement and I am super exhausted. I have been awake since four something this morning. Um, my insides have been so messed up lately and blah blah blah. So, I'm all ready. I have my clothes out there for tomorrow. And I have... Where's my camera case? And that blanket's going with us. And then... I've got a crochet bag. There we go. Um, so the green one's got crochet stuff in it. And then that one is my laptop. So I can do all the things. And then I've got my regular suitcase there. And my medical books out there. And one more blanket. I think that's it. Oh, we've got toiletries and stuff in the bathroom too. So... I think I'm more tired than freaked out right now. I'm sure the freaked out will hit tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go lay on my stomach for as long as I possibly can. And, oh my gosh. I can't believe it's tomorrow. I half wish it wasn't tomorrow. And I'm half excited that it's tomorrow. So, cross my fingers that everything goes good. And I'll see you guys on the way. Bye. It is the morning of the feeding tube surgery, and I'd rather stay in bed. <laughs> okay, one last video. No tube. No tube. <laughs> and we made it to the hospital, and I just realized that I've been here before when I had all of my manometry testing done and the other tubes that they had to put in. Um, this is the place that I came to, which is super, super cool. So the hospital is like, it's lovely. This is the waiting area. <laughs> and then they have like pretty sculptures and all sorts of neat stuff. Super cool. And there's mom. I'm teaching her Instagram. <laughs> Okay, we back at you. We saw coming through, and I did get pictures of the um, island and the, the moon too. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just saw something outside, and I have to video it so I can show you guys. Okay, hold on. It looks like a uterus. So those are the ovary, like the fallopian tubes, and then the uterus, and then the, the who parts and whatever. Doesn't it look like girly bits? Okay, that's all I got. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, so I am in the pre-op. I have an awesome yellow gown. Super sexy, I know y'all are jealous. And I've got super awesome yellow sock so I don't bite it I have my finger thing on that's funny um and blood pressure and all that good stuff um blood pressure is super high I have no temperature control um pulse is super high blah 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 blah, blah. so everything is good to go and we'll catch up in a few okay so IV is in she did a great job and I didn't pass out and I didn't puke. Go tea. Um, I got all of my extra bands on, so I'm a full risk. And all my allergies and all that good stuff. So 
my hair is braided, we're getting closer. So I still have to meet the nurse, the anesthesiologist, and um, um, my doctor that's actually gonna do it. He's gonna come in and I've got extra questions and stuff for everybody and all the things that they need to know. So I'm nervous and I'm ready to not be worried. It's my room. Look at this cute picture. Isn't that so cute? Super adorable. It's super cute. All right, in a few. Okay, we have met anesthesiology. He was a super nice guy. Um, we went over all of our things. And um, so we went over the whole full intubation thing instead of the block. And hold on, somebody come in. Okay, one of my nurses came in. They were stealing stuff from my room. Um, so, okay, so fully intubated, which is better for me. Um, so, no. Um, I have the boyfriend on the phone. He's right there. He's got the list of everything. And I have mummy. I have my sidekick. Um, so anesthesia is all set. They're going to put me on that scopolamine patch again that went behind my ear like I have for the ear surgery. So to try to help with nausea and motion sickness. Very appreciated because I'm both nauseous and motion sick as I stand here. Um, let's see, we talked about all the things, so all seems good. So one of his associates is going to be taking me back, so I have to go over all the same stuff again so that there's two people that remember all the things because I have to have them warn me before anesthesia so I don't yank my IV out. That would be less gooder. Um, what else? I think that was about all with anesthesia. And then... I met one of the PAs with interventional radiology and she came in and went over everything so all is exactly what I expected it to be and I asked her a few more questions. Um, so all seems good so they have to work out my pain management afterwards so I don't have as rough a time as I have had in the past and so hopefully that will be all good so we're still waiting for surgical nurse to come in. I still have to meet her and the secondary anesthesiologist. And then if my interventional radiologist is going to do the procedure, then we're good to go. Um, if one of the other ones is going to do it, then he's going to come in and I want to meet him and all that good stuff. So I'll keep you posted. Okay, so I'm going back and I'm totally blurry, but that's okay. So I'll see you in a little bit. Bye! Off for the things. Off. All the good things. Bye. Bye Love you. Bye, all the people. Hi, guys. It is the day after surgery, so Saturday. Um, Saturday, so Friday, it started late. We were supposed to go in at 10.30, I guess. I don't think we actually got in there until about noon. But it was fine because he gave me like six more opportunities to lay on my stomach, which definitely did it for me. And everybody's been super amazing. Uh, my associate interventional radiologist is the one that did the uh, procedure. And he was super nice. And um, I did get to see Dr. Lamas. Um, so they were both kind of there. and meet and greet and whatever, which is super awesome. Um, how long is the surgery? How long was I in there? Do you even know? Because I was in recovery for like ever. True. Um, I think the surgery lasted around an hour. An hour. Um, so, you know, I go in with my sheet that has all the things like that everybody has to know and, and my nurse and um, anesthesia and all that stuff. So I go over, one of the last things that I always go over is the problem that I have trouble processing pain medication, especially processing pain in general after anesthesia, and pain meds don't affect me the same way as a lot of people, um, and I can't process through the pain normally like I normally do, you know, putting my head back and forth and moving my hands and feet and whatever, it just, I can't do it. Um, so I wake up out of surgery, um, and I'll, like, I had a few minutes of that kind of like lull, like you can't feel anything, 
and then my whole body hurt. I mean, it was just, it was unreal. I don't know how many people I had to talk to, but they're all trying to talk to me. I have the worst dry mouth in the history of ever. I had just been intubated. I can't breathe through my nose because I was so upset, and so I'm trying to talk to them. I could get like one word out. It was so frustrating. And so I had somebody come down from pain management, which is actually part of anesthesia at this health system. And she came down and she's trying to ask me all the questions that I told everybody else before the procedure. And they were like, oh, we've got you, we've got you covered, it's no problem whatsoever. And then I was like, you know, I really need to be hooked up to some type of pain pump. It just makes it so much easier for me so I can regulate my pain. And none of that happened. It felt like I was screaming for six hours before I finally got help. It was really rough. Um, I don't remember being moved up here. So we have a private room. Do a little tour. It's super cute. We've got view outside the skyline. And it's sunny today, which is a whole lot of magical. Oh, I love it so much. Um, we've had two sets of nurses so far. Um, everybody's super nice. Somebody on the GI floor, because I'm on the GI floor, that's where they put me. Um, oh, that's a thicky here. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I'm still NPO until they clear me, but they gave me the little wet swabby doos as I pour it all over myself. Much so hard with my mouth being so dry anyway. Ugh makes me even harder. So I was no liquid after midnight on Thursday. So I've had a couple sips of water with medication and the normally kind of stuff and whatnot. Um, I met with a nutritionist today. Um, I asked her name twice and I still don't remember what it was. I think it was A. Oh yeah, I was totally wrong. Okay, Catherine, there you go. Um, so we covered what kind of feed I'm going to start with and Okay, so super big, not exactly a complication, but it wasn't super duper, that obviously we were hoping to have the whole GJ placed yesterday, um, but my anatomy is weird and they were worried about messing stuff up and they had already warned me that it was at least a 50-50 possibility that they were going to have to place the G um, and then I'll have to come back in four or five weeks. And then they'll place the J or extend what I've already got. Um, so it's disappointing, but I kind of wonder if maybe it's not better because it's a little bit less for my body to have to process at one fell swoop. So I can process the G for a month, um, heal hopefully super good, and then when they extend the J, like obviously that'll be ideal. For the um, nutritionist that came in, um, we were talking about like what rate of feed, because right now we're gonna try to go a full 24 hours, like it's always running, to try to get me back up to some kind of energy level, which sounds amazing. Um, but the problem is, it's not going to my jejunum now because we can't place that one for um, a month. So it goes, so it'll go directly into my stomach, which isn't ideal, and we're gonna have to start super crazy low. So I won't be getting full calories. Um, but hopefully in a month or so, we will. So, okay, here's the awesome. So it's a full GJ tube. They still have it bandaged a bit. Look at this, I'm green. I feel like, I wanna say a Smurf, but the Hulk. <gasps> I could totally be the Hulk. <laughs> so. I'm blue all around. No, green. Um, so right now I've got, it's a peg, and I can do meds through this port, I feed through this port, that's my balloon port, and then I can off and on and do um, uh, extra medication feeds and stuff, or pushes through that. And so we've got it off right now because I just took some um, of my meds that they hadn't been able to So I'm 
normally I'm okay if I'm laying down. Um, getting up is not amazing, but tolerable. Standing feels pretty good, as long as I don't do it a huge amount of time, because then I start hunching and pushing all the things, which is less ideal. But there's something about laying down, whatever the muscles are that are messing with me. Ugh, hurts so bad. So then I like hyperventilating to try to get past the pain. So we're trying to get something else for pain because the one that I'm on now, like, it just makes me feel a little bit lolly, almost like numbish, sort of kind of in my hands and my head. But uh, obviously, it's not fixing the side part. Um, but I also think, for whatever reason, on that side, that my ribs are sublocating, like over and over and over again. So I keep having to like put them back where they go. So that's been rough. Um, the nurses are super awesome. Mom is super awesome. She's my buddy. Love you. She's my hospital buddy. I love you too. So we're hanging in there, and I got my sexy socks. Look at my sexy socks. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they match my super sexy hospital gown. It was super funny. I was talking to the first nurse um, that was down in pre-op. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was like a gown with color. I was like, I'm so excited. And then she left to do something. Mom was finally back with me at that point. And then she brought another nurse in to steal stuff from my room. And she grabbed like a bag and something and we were talking about the gowns and she was like, I think you guys are the first persons that I've ever seen that you like the gowns. And I was like, but they're so sparkly and colorful and they match my nails and it just, I don't know, it did it for me. So I'm hanging in there. Um, I don't think I slept more than 30 minutes last night and that was rough. Um, way less emotional than yesterday, so that's good too. So progress. And We'll see if they can get some more pain meds. And then we're hoping as soon as the um, radioscopy clears with whoever magical person he has to clear it with, um, that we're going to start feeds. Um, but we're starting it in my stomach, which is not ideal. So we're going to start really, really, really low and slow and see how it goes and see how I can tolerate them. So cross our fingers. I'll keep you all posted. Hi. So here's a look at all the stuff we're getting ready to get started on. Kangaroo pump. Kangaroo pump. Other stuff I don't know what it's called. Tubing. Flushing. There's actually the feed and the saline because she's getting free water. Yay! Free water. Okay, you guys. So we're doubling up on the pain meds that I've been getting. We're adding another one um, that's longer lasting. And of course I'm having side effects off of the pain meds that I'm on. I started itching like I do with morphine. And so they gave me Benadryl for that. So let's hope that, oh and then, so the oral pain med and my Zofran will be here in about 45 minutes. So we're hoping all of that is going to kick my brain in the ass and I can finally sleep for a little bit. And we're about to start feeds for the first time. Go team. But it's going in my stomach and not my jejunum because we couldn't get the tube in the jejunum yet. So we're gonna start crazy slow, see if my tummy can handle anything, and then go from there. I think we're starting with like 10 mils an hour or something, just super, super slow. So cross my fingers. And I'll tell you guys how it goes. Bye. Alright, so we're about to get started with the feed. Oh my gosh. So this is what you what I was talking about when we flush. When you flush, so you always flush through that one? Yeah. Okay. So you turn it off towards that. Okay. And then there you go. And then turn it back off towards yourself. Okay. So that it doesn't run out. It might leak a little out. Just sometimes, little, little, little. but it's like good to have a paper towel underneath. Okay. okay. Super easy. And it's good to flush it every so often, especially if you're they start doing like um, boluses. Yeah. Because it or can meds get clogged in there and whatever too. With the tube feed. Okay. And it just keeps it clear. Clear is good. And you said something earlier about doing something to that other tip. 
Oh, for this so one? Didn't oh, just loosen it when oh, you're yeah. priming the pump. If you don't loosen it when it's first priming, the pressure builds up because the pump is pushing everything out. <laughs> It'll okay. go like shooting across. Yeah. <laughs> I guess unless you're on the receiving end of that. Wouldn't be good. It's funny, but mm -hmm. it can be deadly. I'm sure that's not right. deadly, but you know. But not Call awesome. Serious injury, huh? I know. My goodness, making you work for it. You didn't want yeah. that one to come out. I don't want to like yank it. I know. Because if it happens to just pop off, I don't want to pull the tube. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's all you do, basically. I'm good. Just shake it, it in there. Okay. Okay. And then make sure, turn it back off towards that spout. So then, now it's gonna run straight in. Straight that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, so we've got pump up there. So, how do you, um, oh my gosh, this is so fun. Oh my gosh. So it's going at 10 mils per an hour. Okay. And you're gonna have this, this is just water. And okay. every three hours, you're gonna hear it push 85 mils of water. Through it. And flush just And water. then it goes right back to the feeds? Yeah. Okay. Once it finishes water, it'll go back to the feeds. Okay. And the pump controls all that. How do you tell on the pump, like, how much is going in? Like, is there, I can't see any of it. It's like, it says up here, uh -huh. um, when you, maybe you yeah. can watch the video, but it says feed rate, 10 mils per hour. Okay. Um, and then it'll tell you how much is, like, has been fed, like. Oh, okay, like it. Yeah. Mileage counter. Basically. Okay. Your odometer, honey. So it, right now it says Everybody one mil. But right now it's just a trickle, so. Right, we knew it was going to be like super, super, super slow. But if you tolerate it in like six, six to eight hours, we'll bump it up to See 20. If we can move it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's right there. It's going to go super slow. It has begun. Yay! Yay. Oh my gosh. Can you show my awesome green and the Hulk? Huh? That's so funny. It's crazy how distended my abdomen still is. My poor insides don't know what to do with food. Okay. Oh, and then, so if the feed bottle runs out, does the pump like stop and alarm and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. It should. Usually if it's like this, since we change it every 24 hours, Anyways. we never run out. Okay. But you can program how much you want, like how much your volume is going to infuse. So okay. this is like a thousand. Okay. So once it finishes the thousand here, yeah, it will alarm and tell you. Change so it. by then, you should you know have plenty of time. Yeah. And so it's 10 mils an hour. Yeah. Okay. For right now. Hopefully my stomach will not love be, it. Not to we'll be a douche love canoe. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. Doke. Oh my gosh, we're filming. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> so we had feeds going real slow at 10 mils. I don't even know how long. Do you have any idea how long we I don't even think it was an hour. I don't know. Um, it's 4.20 here. Right? 2.45. So, 3.45. An hour and a half. And it just hurt. I was super nauseous. It kicked a migraine in too. So they're going to try to get me migraine bombs and we turn the pump off for a little bit see if we can get anything to settle down and we'll start again two steps forward one step back we'll get there Okay, the unveiling. <laughs>
<laughs> my new accessory. Oh, I'm so swollen. So you can see where all the I was having tape problems. Yeah, that's, we need to keep that off. Keep that up in the air so that she can let that yeah. get back. It's got little wrinkles in it. It does. Yeah. It's gonna it feels so much better. better. Okay. So I have metal clips that come out that hold my stomach to my abdomen and then sutures. And then my awesome new accessory. It's super close to midline, but not. Oh. Slightly off center. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. So I'm super bloated. I haven't gone to the bathroom in like four days now. Huge amounts of fluid. Feed and everything else. Um, the tape coming off wasn't too bad since it was done fast. But, um, gauze that was underneath it was sticky a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, it doesn't look too bad either. Not real icky or gross. Uh, I'm so glad that part's done. Go team! I'm human again. Actually, I'm about to be more human. Um, okay, so I have thrush again. That's less fun. So we're doing nice statin four times a day to try to kick that again. Um, so potassium is the devil. Um, I knew I was low before, so they put up IVs and I didn't even think about it. And then I was pretty sure they were putting fire into my veins, so I thought my IV blew. Um, but the charge nurse came in and checked it and said it was fine and it was blood return and the whole deal. And then it ended up being the potassium. So we had an option to switch it to liquid and we just pushed it through my G-tube, which is a whole lot better. Um, so I was taken off of NPO. Now I have my meal. That would be broth, broth, jello, and juice. <laughs> That's at least something. Um, I'm off my feet in the IV at the moment. I'm so bloated, it was so uncomfortable. So we're gonna try to have some dinner and then take a shower. That's where I'm gonna feel superhuman. And then I'm gonna hold the bed down again. Or maybe go for a walk about it, it was really nice out. Okay, keep you listening. Okay, so we're about to take a shower and I got unhooked from my feet and my IV so I could have a break because I literally feel like formula and broth and stuff is about up to there and so they had to wrap I've never seen anything like it before it's like plastic wrap almost but it's got sticky stuff like all around the outside so it's supposed to prevent my IV from getting non-sterile and whatnot which is pretty cool um, I'm super distended still everything just feels swollen from the surgery and whatnot the top feels really swollen. Not super comfy. But the tube hole actually isn't too bad. Like I don't feel that. It's mostly like the surrounding part. It's kind of not real excited about things. Um, so nice to be unhooked. And I had, I was switched to a clear diet. And so I've had beef broth, some of that. I've had a couple cubes of strawberry jello because strawberry jello 
and it all hurts really bad going down like it's like everything like my stomach just cramps or something anytime I drink anything but it's happening with water it happened with apple juice earlier it happened with the jello it happened with the broth and they said that it was going to be harder for me to eat but I was more thinking volume instead of just a sip of water um, so I'm going to take a shower and then we'll get all hooked back up um, go from there I guess but I'm tired of talking okay that's all I got I'm for real this time Thank you.